Hello and welcome to this vlog slash review. Um, I hope you can hear me. I am standing right by a road, um, so it might be noisy. I brought my uh, other mic, so maybe that will help later on. But today I am taking the Canon D10 with me on a little walk with my dog Pino. This is my walking view. Look how beautiful Brooklyn is today. Such a perfect summer day. <laughs> Kino loves to look at buildings too. Hey Pino. Pino. What you doing? Hey Koi! Hey Juju! It's so cute! <laughs> Latte secured. Pino got his pop cup. I think it might be one of his first pop cups. I think he is very happy right now. <laughs> okay, this is definitely <laughs> a very dangerous act that I am doing. I have the camera just sitting on top of the bench. I hope it doesn't fall. Okay, so I want to talk about this camera a little bit more and why I think it's the best worst camera or the worst best camera <laughs> of 2023. All right, let's talk about the pros of the V10. Um, I really like this form factor. Um, it's, I think it's like really unique and having the flip screen, having the stand is really cool. I like the buttons. It's very clicky so you, you can feel the buttons clicking so it's really tactile. Also um, just having the Canon colors is really nice. There's something about Canon that I still really like, even though I've switched. I mean, I still have my Canon cameras, but my main cameras are more and more becoming Sony's recently. But there is some magic to this Canon, Canon-ness, if you will. I also like the fact that I am able to connect an external microphone like this. I'm using the Rode Wireless Go Me right now, plugged into the 3.5 millimeter microphone jack so I can be far away and you can still hear me. I really like how tiny it is so I literally put everything in this bag. I can fit the camera and the mic system into this tiny little bag so it's very small. It can even fit in my pocket so that's really nice. Okay so now let's talk about some of the cons that I have found in this camera. So one of the big ones is the stabilization. The stabilization on this is pretty bad, <laughs> to be honest. When I'm walking, at least, I had it set to the maximum stability setting, um, but it's just not that great. I, even right now when I'm sitting and if I kind of shake the camera a little bit, um, it might be a little bit uncomfortable to see. It is pretty shaky. And you know, in, this is 2023, so Insta360 just came out with the new Go 3, which has like the same flippy screen, but the camera is detachable, it's magnetic, um, it has a bunch of cool features. DJI came out with Osmo Action 4, which has insane stability. It has 4K 120, <laughs> while this camera which also came out in 2023 only has up to 4k 30 frames and every time i have the settings in 4k it shows a screen that is like oh my god even now it's telling me it's like overheating but it's not even that hot right now so it's kind of it's like come on every time i start up the camera and I have the setting in 4K, the camera will be like, hey, just so you know, your setting is like in 4K and that's like pretty hard on this machine. And it's like, my phone even does 8K in 2023. So come on, you can do 4K 24 and not show me this error message 
that I cannot even find the settings to turn off. So if you know how to turn that off, let me know, because I couldn't find any of the settings. <laughs> However, I think one of the trends right now in 2023 is buying like old camcorders and like old digital cameras, like using nostalgia as one of like an aesthetic. <laughs> and I think this camera actually kind of reminds me of that because it's not perfectly stable and that just kind of makes it feel like it's more authentic. And uh, <laughs> I'm back home from our little walk. So we just talked about the pros and cons of the V10. We are going to our friend's place soon and she's cooking like a massive feast for us. I am so excited. Before we go, I just wanted to chat about this book that I'm reading, AKA listening to in Audible. The book is called The Artist's Way. And maybe a lot of you have already read that book. Um, if you haven't, I think it's one of the classic books about creativity and like unblocking your creativity. And even if you're not like a traditional artist, like if you're not a painter, it's more about being inspired than being an artist in a traditional sense. So uh, I think it's helpful for any type of profession and um, it's really relevant to my channel because I have been saying that this channel is for the everyday creators. And I have been saying that because I believe everyone is a creator, whether they identify to that or not. I think everyone wants to self-express in some way. And I think self-expression is creating. And I hope this channel becomes a place where people come to be inspired to create in many ways. I started this book a few days ago, so I'm only maybe like halfway through. It's really interesting and kind of eye-opening in a way. It's very, it has some like spiritual notions, but I, I think there's some things that I would like to implement into my own life as well. So maybe I'll do another formal review when I'm finished. But if you are curious about this book, I recommend it to anyone so far. If you have already read the book, let me know what you thought. If you've implemented like morning pages or artist dates, which are some of the things that it recommends to do, please let me know in the comments if that's something that you have picked up. So far, I've been uploading a bunch of like more techie videos. It's like a really clean A-roll shot in my studio. So it's very like gadget tech review kind of vibes. Um, but I hope to do more vlog type stuff and hope to show you a little bit more of my life and my personality and kind of like bring you along in this journey. If you're watching this, you're going to be the OGs and I will forever cherish you <laughs> and your presence. So um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Okay, so I think we should get going to our dinner party and we're taking Pino. Let's go. Okay, wait, before I go, I forgot to mention one thing about this camera <laughs> that I don't like. Um, okay, let's set you down. You guys know it's 2023 and this camera does not account for vertical shooting at all. You could set the camera sideways, but it doesn't like rotate the UI and the stand doesn't work when it's sideways. The competitors are definitely thinking about vertical videos. This camera didn't really think about it or like it just gave up on having compatibility. So that's one of the cons. Let's go to the gym before 
before we wrap this up. from the gym and I'm having the most protein packed most Japanese snack ever <laughs> it's tofu natto and this um, bonito flake thing so that's pretty much it for this chill vlog slash review what do you guys think of the Canon V10. I really like this form factor and this little stand. I like this stand because it goes this way and this way so you get kind of more angles that you can have your camera set up. At the gym or at the park I thought it was like kind of fun to find places where I can set this but the competitors like Insta360 Go 2 or 3. You can just like magnetically attach the camera basically anywhere that's like metallic. That also opens up many possibilities of where you can set your camera at. At the price point at $4.29 as of today on Amazon, it's definitely not the worst option, but it's hard to say it is the best. So let me know what you think of this camera and this vlog. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech and creativity content and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.